hi, that's a way to start the day. I know. I don't, I feel kind of itchy. Fired up? Can I be inappropriate? You're fired up. Go for it. Let it rip. Um. Welcome to Disrespectfully with Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically, we're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully. I love Sydney Sweeney's boob. They're so great. Okay, out of the places I thought that I was going to go. Yeah, but I meant like but inappropriate please, in, like, in, an, in an objectifying way. Okay, I need more information. I know. Okay, so I went to the GLAAD Awards last night and she was there. Mm. She presented and oh, lovely. Glory. <laughs> yeah. And also Jason Sudeikis was there and he's, he can get it. Mm. Yes. And the man is fine. Their table, Ted Lasso's table is right next to ours. And like where I was sitting, it was just like, he was just like right there in front of me. I had no choice but to just like ogle, oogle. <laughs> Did you see breasts or sedacus sedacus and then mm. I, I got sedacus and then boobs sedacus boobs i mean wonderful and then who else is there renee rap <sighs> i'm obsessed with her and her new, new girlfriend. Nash. and 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 oprah you saw oprah yeah i had quite a night last night yeah how are you doing you uh, seem uh, you seem chipper more chipper than i thought you were going to be based on your text messages this morning yeah well i was my friend joey and his husband, they had a table and they had an extra little spot for me. The hot one? Yeah. That really hot guy? Yeah. Called Joey, my other brother. Okay. Yeah. We, I would like to be introduced. My, him. He's just so hot. My other brother, Joey. Okay. <laughs> Love. <laughs> but yeah, it was such a great, I, I felt like it was such a privilege to go there to, to attend. I can't. Oh my God, my to eyes, be in the same room as Sydney Sweeney's breasts. I feel like there's like a little pulse in my upper brow. Here. Not that I see, but that can be a thing of exhaustion. We had very different uh, nights. You're that sounds amazing, and yeah, Sydney Sweeney. I mean, and also she's such a beautiful girl in general. And like people who talk about she wouldn't be pretty without her boobs. First of all, get fucked. Like I just can't even imagine uh, saying something so stupid. But choke on those words. Choke on those words. May her breast she's never grace the same room. Here. She's beautiful from. <laughs> she's beautiful. She'd be like it doesn't any, matter any angle. Any, I don't care. Mm -mm. Well, while you were doing that last night, I had a particularly traumatizing incident because my cat Laszlo was just spayed. Oh, and right. you know, she's had the cone. It's not going well. Cone of shame. S cone of shame. So I put a onesie, like a cat surgery onesie. It's specifically for this on her. And she hated <laughs> that sorry. even more than the fucking cone. Please hold. <laughs> you want to see her walk in it? It's the most dramatic thing you've ever seen. Did you like pick out this like pattern? It was the only one that would deliver in 24 hours when I realized how bad the cone was going. <laughs> so cute and also so ridiculous what the fuck <laughs> okay so here's the thing got this for her this has been fucking harder for me than it has been for her i'm like it's so upsetting so she's like her gait she like walks like fucking harry potter the prisoner of azkaban when what's his name turns into the fucking wolf like oh he's like walking like that it's not going well and she just she's like with a feather you can knock her over so she just keeps falling like the london bridge like she just gets really <laughs> scared and falls over and I didn't really consider that when I was factoring in the litter box situation. So I'm getting ready for bed. I'm FaceTiming Raleigh and I hear this strange noise. I'm not going to go into graphic detail because it's so disgusting. But all you need to know is she basically fainted in her litter box where things were happening. Mm. And I can't like properly bathe her right now because she has fucking stitches. I also don't do well with icky things and was fucking screaming, crying. Throwing, throwing up. up. <laughs> so you were at Glad looking at Sydney's rack, having a wonderful evening next to hot Joey, brother Joey, Ted Lasso. Oprah's just like radiating in the room, and I am dealing with Oprah, a litter box trauma. Do you know what the that I hear this like sound bite in my head? Oprah, what's that from? I don't know because my head is ninety nine percent. Does anyone bites. in this room know what that I'm talking about? Oprah. No, I was asking everyone I knew last night. They're like. Oprah. No, it's from a movie. Oprah. I don't know. I know. And the more I say it is not going to help. Oprah's so, like, just, yeah. How'd she look? Great. She looked great. Was she wearing purple? I, you like she wears purple all the time. Do you want to see my photograph? I have, I also could show you Sydney's boobs. Yeah, that's preferred. <laughs> she was wearing purple. Black and purple. Yeah, she loves purple. And I took a video of Sydney because the boobs boobing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am a the founding member of the itty bitty titty committee. My whole life, it's been a thing. Anyone who has experienced that, like 
trauma growing up in eighth grade. You're just picked on relentlessly. I honestly would get a boob job if Mm -hmm. I was not afraid of uh, so many people have bad reactions to the silicone and like have all these issues and get really sick from it. Get really sick. So I would do that if I wasn't afraid of that. Listen, from someone that went from like having like really small boobs to then gaining weight and then gaining chest. No, boobs suck. It's always bodacious, beautiful, big titted women that say that. I'm so, whenever I say this, like complain about my flat chest, people are always like, Raleigh will be like, ah, my back hurts. You don't want these. And she has like the most, she has like a Sydney Sweeney esque rack. And I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, that's so, if you woke up one day like because me, you, cause then you, you wanna wear like certain tops or something like that, like top, you're like, nah. Cause I just look, I look just so like, ugh. Oh, my big, beautiful boobs will just hang out. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> no, you don't. Dream. I'm telling you, you don't. From from someone that's had both in life. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. Well, I'm really happy for Sydney. I'm like, how does that happen naturally? Uh, anyway, anyways. I think we've beat her rack to death. And okay, you know, well, perhaps we should, you know, move on. But girl, we, you know, big fans. You don't want to talk about this, but I don't care. We were just discussing this out there. This is you. That's a pop culture. Oh, because I met JoJo Siwa too, and then you brought up Abby Lee Miller. Okay, so it was, yeah, it was the JoJo to Abby pipeline because <laughs> I didn't realize that she was on Dance Moms. JoJo, yeah. that was her start. That was her first thing. Yeah. And how long was she on it for? Do you know? Girl, long I Long time? I, like, I long enough for her to, like, launch a full-blown, like, career. Like, she's massive. Totally. So I was like, is that the Abby Lee Miller thing? And obviously, I mostly have just seen clips online. <laughs> on her, like wheelchair like backing out oh and just go and hauling ass to baskin robin i'm pretty sure (laughs) ben and jerry's i think or something where did did she go i well i love that that's one of the most cinematic masterpieces if that didn't win an emmy she's hauling ass for the 31 flavors after someone shames her for being on her phone and i'm like that's exactly how i'd react to i would have to i i mean i understood i need some rocky road for this rocky road exactly no she was like <laughs> what an icon but i'm like scrolling tiktok and someone saw her working at the cracker barrel as a host and people didn't believe it first of all she looks amazing second of all okay we saw her in her wheelchair so i thought that she used one all the time she's standing up at the cracker barrel <laughs> yelling part like parties of five with just absolute that that voice the that voice specific. so people didn't believe her and then she posted a video of her voice and it was definitely her so I'm like, what is going on? I know you don't care about this, but I'm like, it's not that I care. It's just like, I like, I don't really know how long can we talk about this? <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be a fleeting <laughs> moment, but I'm yeah. just saying. No, no, it's not that I don't care, but it's like, <laughs> she kind of sucks. She's a mean person, isn't that's she? Like, no, she's bad. Like, ever, that's like, people don't like her. So it's like, okay, glad you're looking good these days. Congrats on the new job. So my other thing about it is I'm like, I feel bad for people invading her privacy. And even if she's a bad person, if someone like used to be on reality TV and they get a job, I remember there was someone who was working at a Trader Joe's and he was on a show, a really popular show in the 80s. And people he would like reposted it because he saw it and like, someone was making fun of him. And he was like, yeah, I have a job. Like, you know, it was not a good look. So I understand that you're like, what is Abby Lee Miller doing here? But I don't know. She's, she has would, a job. I did want to bring this up because I was thinking about it. I love massages. Like I, I, that's like my one sort of like, not one, I have many luxury things I like to like indulge in for yourself. I'm Mrs. Treat Yourself, right? But do you know what is the least relaxing thing is getting a massage from like a hot massage therapist? Has that ever happened to you? No, I usually get the like burly person that looks like they've, they've had some life experiences, but Same. they have, but they have tender hands that are like rough in a way. You know what I mean? Like. They're gentle with you, but firm in the way that you need. Yeah, like their hands are really soft, but really strong. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel like I'd be like, I'd like a hot person. No, no, you wouldn't. Everyone thinks that because it's like, that's like such like a fantasy kind of trope of like, ooh, like you get the hot massage and then you're like, you know, and then you like fuck. (laughs) I'm thinking about that Sex and the City episode where Sam sees that hot masseuse and like grabs his junk and then gets Well, yeah, because like she'd heard that he like does stuff. But no, let me tell you. So it'd be easier if you just knew what I was talking about because the whole time you're like, oh, great. This person's like very attractive. Why wouldn't you want a hot person rubbing you? I'm just like, of course you do. But then do you know, then you're sitting. Okay, let me just paint this picture. Okay, They greet you. You're like, wow, very attractive person. Here we go. So now you have to take your clothes off. So now you have your clothes off. They don't have their clothes off. That's not usually how it works. (laughs) 
There's a power imbalance all of a sudden. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now you're like laying there and you're like, wow, this person's like attractive. I wonder like what they do for fun. <laughs> what they do for fun because you start thinking about this you're like why am i thinking about this person stop thinking about your it. face is in the pillow and you're like so what are you doing are <laughs> no doing? you're not but you're just like kind of like you're like you're like wondering about this person why because that's how we think like you know when you come on this is why it's not relaxing mm. you know and then you're like i wonder um if they think i'm attractive <laughs> they probably do and then you're like, what if they do? Now now I don't have clothes on and they're touching my body. I'm just supposed to lay here. Well, and we saw Sam got in trouble, so we can't. And then well, you go to roll and not, over and you have the face prints and you try to do it like sexy. And roll, like, <laughs> roll over and you're like, yeah, those great things. No, I'm just like a like one of those the seals. <laughs> the seals? But, you know, like remember, you know, San Francisco and they all like lay on the like wooden things. Oh, then one gets in the water and all of them do. Like, or, 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 or. What are they called? A seal, babe. It's just a seal. So you're I'm, feeling like a seal. I'm a seal pup. You're like, and I'm like, and I'm like, well, it's so cute when they do that when they pat their bellies because they're just and they just like lay on each other. They flop around. That's me okay. on the massage table. And you're lubricated. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I do. I just don't agree. I feel like I just love to be touched so much uh, that I just like no. I don't care, bitch. I go every single week to get touched, and then all of a sudden you have this fine dude, and you're like, I can't. I can't relax. I'm all like this. I'm like, oh. they're like touching like your groin. They're touching your butt. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're like, is there anything off limits? And you're like, you grab your <laughs> heel just right in there. And you're like, absolutely not. I'm just telling you, it Literally is not nothing. It is, the purpose of that is to like relax and just like just do that. And all of a sudden you're like, I'm thinking way too much about shit that I should not be thinking about. And I need to just disassociate. I literally need someone just to smack me across the face. So you all now know I hate silence. I always need to be listening to something. Well, I found my new favorite thing and it's Dipsy. Mm -hmm. Just don't forget to use your headphones. Indulge in a steamy world of fantasy filled with hundreds of sexy stories on Dipsy designed to turn you on whatever your fantasy is. Hot massage. <laughs> mm. I'm always listening to audiobooks and people are probably like, wow, she's really getting educated. And I'm like, no, no, it's <laughs> steamy. Dipsy definitely keeps it hot and spicy during the cold winter months. Picture this cozy blanket, crackling fireplace, mm. and you listening to a sexy fantasy audiobook. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about the second chance romance, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. And there's a growing library of fantasy series with vampires personal fave, mm -hmm. Greek gods and fairy smut to explore the bounds of your pleasure. I love fairy smut. I love ah! that I now have the words for it. <laughs> New content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions and sexy written stories to read. Let Dipsy be your go to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind or even heat things up with a partner. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash disrespectfully. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash disrespectfully. Dipsystories.com slash disrespectfully. This episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V, an award-winning hair care line founded by the fabulous Jennifer Aniston, who we all know has the best hair. The Jen hair. Like, <sighs> it's iconic. Imagine this. Jen got tired of the same old struggle we all face, choosing between hair products that work and the ones that are actually good for us. With Lola V, the struggle's no more. I have not been the best to my hair. Remember the blonde era? Okay. I've been in my blonde area and I'm still struggling. That's why I need products that not only repair the look of damage, but also shield from future harm. And Lola V is all about naturally derived plant-based goodness, no silicones, sulfates, parabens, or gluten. And of course, cruelty-free and vegan, which y'all know we love. And that's why we love Lola V's best sellers, the cult classic glossing detangler and perfecting leave-in conditioner. These aren't just styling products. They're your hair's new best the glossing detangler is honestly my life. Yeah. 
And here's a treat for you. For a limited time, you get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lolavie.com. Just use code disrespectfully at checkout. I love the restorative for shampoo and conditioner plus intensive repair treatment because it truly makes me feel like I'm walking out of a spa and also my hair is like, <laughs> it's like drier than the hair does it right now. <laughs> so I need all the help I can get. It's not only good for my hair, but it helps bandage breakage. After my shower, I use the glossing detangler, perfecting leave-in and lightweight uh, oil to style my hair because I just love the way it leaves my hair just like smooth and just like shiny. shiny. Exactly. Silky. These multifunctional formulas work together to help just like that silkiness. That riz. I want that shiny. The riz of the hair. Just I want that gen hair. Mm. You know, Same. unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolavie.com. As our lawyer listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code disrespectfully at checkout. 15% off your entire order at lolavie.com with promo code D-I-S-R-E-S-P-E-C-T-F-U-L-L-Y. Please note, you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you because we love you. I need to tell you a secret that I've been hiding from you. What? Can it fucking relate to this? I'm sorry. It does. Okay. So back a few episodes ago, when you were telling us about your, your date with Crispin Glover. Yeah. Okay. I was so ashamed. I'm literally like crying because I'm going to laugh that I didn't know who that was. Before I, I Googled him when I got home and I was like, oh, that guy. And I'm the reason I did it was because I was like, am I so fucking stupid? I knew his face. I just didn't know his name. So I like went with it because I didn't want to look stupid. And I should have just embraced him. But like, who the fuck is that? Because you know who that is? Creepy Thin Man from Charlie's Angels. Yeah. That is how I know him is Creepy Thin Man. This relates to what I'm about to tell you. OK. <laughs> One of the worst things that has ever happened to me happened to me during a massage. And it was basically Creepy Thin Man, but shorter. He looked like Crispin Glover, but less <laughs> hot and weird. So he was giving me weird energy. I'm on a trip. My friend was like one of work, you know, for sales, like in a ward. And she got a trip to Santa Barbara for the weekend. And we got like spa treatments and shit. And so she brought me. So we get in there and he's odd, immediately odd. And I'm like, well, I'm in here. I'm in the robe. What am I going to do? Leave. So I get naked. I get on the table. I'm getting this massage. And you know how massages, they always feel too quick. Like, you know that things are going too quickly. That's why I'm always like, what's the longest? Three hours. <laughs> Legit. 90, 120. So in yeah. this scenario, you're going to not want that. Let me just tell you right now. So all of a sudden <laughs> I'm like, wow, I've been in here for what feels like a fucking eternity. Like I've time warped. Something is going on. So he goes at the beginning of the treatment. He's like, do you want any extra flourishes? And I'm like, you know, in love, actually, when the guy is like making the, the gift bag and he's like, what are you going to do? Put some buttons on it. Cover it in yogurt because he's taking too long. Oh, yeah. He's got go, out like a little sprig of the whatever. sprig of, yeah, Holly. <laughs> and he's like doing this whole thing. Flourishes. So I think he, you know, like add-ons, right? But what kind of weird Willy Wonka <laughs> way is that of saying fucking, do you want me to rub your scalp extra? I'm like, okay. So I tell him no. So then he starts doing all these like weird things on me that are lovely. Like I'm love. It feels nice, whatever he's doing. But at one point I'm, I'm laying on my back and I could feel him like his junk is basically oh, on my crown no. and I can feel his breathing like palpitating. Like he's like really going for it. And I started to feel super uncomfortable. But as you know, women, we always justify things and are like, am I imagining this? Whatever. So we get up and he takes me There's I see where all the other guests are going. He takes me like a really long way to the front and he kind of holds me there for a minute and he's like asking me how long I'm going to be in town and blah, blah, blah. And we're in Santa Barbara. And he's like, I come to L.A. all the time. If you ever need a massage, here's my card, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I need this interaction to be fucking over. So I leave. The next day, we're, we're still on the property. And I'm like, it doesn't end. After oh, that? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. We're getting to the worst part. Oh, no. So I'm t I told my friend about it. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe I just made it up my head. We're at the little fucking little gym we're like working on walking the treadmill next to my friend Katya shout out Katya we love her mm -hmm. I pull up LinkedIn because I have a LinkedIn notification and I was like this is so weird click it the masseuse fucking looked at my paperwork found my name <gasps> found me on LinkedIn added me on LinkedIn what the fuck is that very mm -hmm. unethical like yeah he obviously why do I I don't want to link with a masseuse no offense like I don't need to professionally like connect with you in that way so you're obviously doing this because you thought it was the safest bet between that and instagram of like 
basically sliding <laughs> in my DMs through it's LinkedIn. Professional. <laughs> yeah, he, exactly. He's it's like business. Babe. Yeah, he's <laughs> like this is this is business groping. I'm like, sir. Okay, but if he was hot, I he... would have added him. <laughs> See? <laughs> Immediately, you're like, I would have fucked him on that. I was like, bring uh-huh. you, you don't even have to bring your little bed. Just come to mine. It's fine. We can just use mine. Yeah, absolutely, I would have. But See? he was, but he was creepy. But okay, I mean, well, isn't that fucking weird? I could feel him like lusting after me as he's rubbing my shoulders and spraying lavender everywhere. So- but I was just like. See, but that's that's why it's either the most relaxing time or it's fucking not. <laughs> I mean, we and, probably got a two hour treatment, but yeah. And that's easier. what I mean. And that's why and the difference is is if they're hot or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they're like, do you want a male, female or a male or a female therapist? They want to be like, do you want hot? Not hot. Mid? Oh Gaslighter? Disappointing? Oh my- how about you ask, emotionally unavailable? Yeah, emotionally available. Do they think I'm hot? Um, <laughs> What's the, yeah? I want I want to see their work. Will they be thinking about me while I'm thinking about them? Um, do we do? We, can we cuddle after? <laughs> Is that one of the extra services? <laughs> yeah, my massage this week was not that. I don't know if the guy. I what if he wanted to add you on LinkedIn? Maybe he did, and he just felt too intimidated. Oh, if he if he were to have like slid into the DMs, I would have been like, "What's up?" I went back times. <laughs> Sorry, that was not English. Are you hungover? <laughs> Duh. I asked this in a nice way, just because you said you had martinis last night. Oh, so. I had martinis and wine. I was drinking Chardonnay at one point. Are you fucking? Should we do a shot? Fucking can't. <laughs> Listen. Should we turn in this this episode, you guys, and kick things up a notch? I went back multiple times to this person. So then, what is the problem? Well, if I got comfortable eventually. Like you know, okay. I felt familiar. Eventually, eventually, it was fine. I knew, like the the initial whatever you know then wore off. You need to get your Samantha Jones on, and if this conversation <laughs> makes it into promos, they need to cut the video with her grabbing his dick because she's like running out of time, and she grabs his dick and she goes. Girl. Is this okay? And it cuts to him with the boss of the place, and she's like, "Apparently, it wasn't." But I don't think he Rubicide. goes to the place that I go to anymore. I need to ask you a question. What? And this leads into a little bit. I can't, I have to talk about it. It's something so upsetting just happened in my life recently that you know about. Oh. But I would like the audience to interact with me on this and let me know what they think. I'm pretty sure I know your opinion. But speaking of sleuthing, mm. so many women commonly are FBI agents, right? So we go, we find things, we help our friends creep. We do. I'm you're I, very, I'm very good at this. You're very good at that. I'm actually not, and I also don't want to hurt my feelings. I don't like to know anything. I'm very. Well, sometimes like, I think you, you have to hurt your own feelings. Oh, I pr- prefer to live in the land of fucking delusion. But I'm not as good. You're good. A lot of friends we have really good at it. I have never fucking heard of someone doing this. I had a situation recently with someone where we met. We hit it off. They went and found my Spotify and they went through every single one of my Spotify playlists. And the way that this came up, they didn't like tell me willingly at first, like we had been hanging out for a few days and then it came up because we were driving and my music was playing and they were like, oh yeah, like I can tell your music taste, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, how, like this playlist is random and this is the only one we've listened to. And they were like, well, I actually found your Spotify and went through every single one of your playlists and all your songs, then went on to mansplain to me <laughs> about music and were like, yeah, it seems like you listen to a lot of festival style music. It feels like such an, in- whoa, baby. Oh. Thanks, Leia. We love you. It feels like such an invasion of privacy, even if it's like public and like, it's fine to do that. But it's like also like, it's so... Playlists and things like that can be so intimate. That's what you're saying. Like if someone sends you a playlist, it's like body. You know what I mean? Let's take the shot and then I'm going to get courage to discuss this because it's like so fucking upsetting. We were already kind of getting into it. Here's. Oh. Every fucking time Katie's like, I just watched your soul leave your body. You did that really casually, but then she just completely disassociated. She's like thinking about her masseuse. I was just telling the Spotify part. So says the weird musical music festival thing. Then it's like, Yeah, I really try and stay away from top 40s. It would really blow your mind the music I could show you. I have a very eclectic music taste. Guess what? I do fucking like top 40 because it's great. It's top 40 for a reason. But I like lots of different kinds of music as we we just went on a fucking emo cruise. Like 
it was just such a weird take and nothing fucking turns me off more than when someone tries to big dick you about music or movies or TV shows. Like those are the same kind of people that are like, I don't really, I don't really watch TV. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry your life sucks so much because I watch it for eight hours a day and I love it. No, I love the, each that, hour more than the last. That I don't watch TV people are the worst. Well, I'm never going to have sex with you. Just know that. If you don't watch TV, how can I possibly relate to you as a person? Oh, what a flex. You don't watch TV. Oh, you're what so What do you cool. do with your time? Oh, you read books? You was, like you go outside? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Be, I'm just yes, saying it's, fucking... not a, it's not a flex to like not take in like all forms of entertainment and media. It's just like not. It's like, well, okay, cool. Like, good for you. For me... It's it's okay to feel that way, but anyone who tries to take anything that they do in life and act like they're on a high horse or mm -hmm. above it, okay, I'm like, okay, Sea Biscuit, calm the fuck down, okay? Trying to like size or sum someone up outside of conversation and spending time with them is is really bizarre to me, and I don't I don't understand that. It's like, yeah, if you want to like learn some, yeah, you can comb through somebody's feed on Instagram or their Spotify, but like. That's not going to tell the full story of a person. You might get a clue or like a, a idea of who somebody is. But like, why would you? And then come with opinions on on their taste and judge them and be like, oh, I could really blow your mind. Well, I could really. You could blow my mind. Mm. Uh, I'm that's something tells me I would be so underwhelmed. Yeah. That's something tells me what I will judge someone for when it comes to their social media, especially a dude is their following. If I want to hurt my feelings because I want to give myself an ick because a guy is playing in my face and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Who they're following or who's following them? Who they follow. Who they follow. Sorry. They're, they're follow not like their followers, but they, they're who they follow. Because that is revealing. And it's not how many people they follow, but if I go in that and I just am doing a scroll and it's just boobs, ass, Tits. It's like Sydney Ooh. Sweetie, Ted Lasso, Oprah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's like it, it is nothing but, and you know, no offense to those girls, you're lovely and all that, but it's like if it is just one Instagram thought after the next, it's like my guy, this is your visual diet. This is what you're taking in on your feed every day, and you're following it and what like interacting with it, like. I am not for you and you are not for me. That's okay. <clears throat> that's, bye bye. That's the thing though, is you have to be able to know that about yourself because I think sometimes people get into relationships with other people where they see those things when they're first starting to date and they just hope that eventually they'll have enough upper hand or love in the relationship to be like, hey, I need you to change who you are. Like we know those guys, they aren't going to change. And it is what is, it is. Or I, they'll just get sneaky. And I, and I have a hard time because like, okay, you know what? Like if you're single guy and like that's single behavior okay I, it's hard to like not knock somebody for that but also like i don't want to date that dude to be honest <laughs> so i will hurt my feelings and be like time to find out time to find out if he's that guy how quickly do you do it into like knowing someone probably pretty quickly pretty soon, yeah problem is it's makes up so much of the population but that's why right now while single and not dating anyone i that the level of unbothered I feel when I see TikToks now that I just can't relate to of like people's lives being ruined by someone who did you you haven't watched Love is Blind yet have you this no, season I have did you are you done I, no I don't watch it all the way through I was talking to my friend about this because after they get out of the pods and now they're like living the messy little lives in like the wherever they go you know it, I kind of lose interest so I this season because I find out how, how trash some of them are and I'm like oh this season was very interesting and I just watched the reunion and there's a guy on it who got, gets fully fucking caught. He's in the pods. Before he goes in the pods, he has a girlfriend. He claims it wasn't my actual girlfriend. Which one is Trevor. It? He's in the pods. Uh, fucking. It's one of the most uncomfortable things I've actually seen of any reality TV show. He gets Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey absolutely body him. Like he is... It is it is watching a murder on TV. It is so crazy the way he walks out. They have fucking receipts immediately run through it. They're like, what do you have to say for yourself? And Nick Lachey's like, you can leave. And he walks out and no one claps. So essentially, Wait, is Trevor, the one he had a mullet. That's me. He's one of the mullet. And like everyone was like, oh, my God. <gasps> OK, so he is I not a nice guy. So he pretends to basically not have a girlfriend. Also to the girlfriend, mm -hmm. he tells her he like needs mm -hmm. to go have this experience, but he's just trying to push his career along. 
He gets out the second he's out of the pods and has his phone. He texts her and is like, I'm so in love with you. This entire thing was fake for me. I'm going to marry you. And she's like, I'm crying. I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And even on his way, I think that day to go film the reunion, this is still going on. And she sold him the fuck out. He was down the river. She did not care. Maybe because she found out he was fucking around on her or whatever. Because she so, watched the show <laughs> and realized that he was like about to propose to somebody. I mean, uh, well, because he was just telling her the whole time, like, it's not real, whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, he absolutely like he literally sits there like this. It's like you in an emergency. He's like, <laughs> just does mm, absolutely shocked. nothing. It's like someone has fainted in front of him. So <laughs> and it's like it's hard to watch, but it's also. He even says on the show, he's trying to defend. He almost started crying. It was like crazy. But when he's trying to defend himself, he goes, yeah, I just she wasn't my actual girlfriend. But you're saying I'm in love with you. I want to marry you. It's literally those guys who are so emboldened to say that shit. Tom and Tom. Who, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. Let's pivot. Oh. Now that you brought them up. Uh. Uh. Anyway, it's those people that are always fucking following all the hot ass bitches and are going to ruin your life. Yeah, there are but in all the DMs. Tom and Tom. I'm sorry, I don't like I, I don't we don't want to keep talking about them either. So maybe they could just straighten up and fly right and we wouldn't have anything to say. Watching Tom talk about running up to a homeless person and basically shoving money in their hand and then doing a like think fast. Yeah, can you hold this to me for real quick? Uh-huh. It's like and sprinting away. That is the most to me was like dehumanizing them as people, like an unhoused person that is just sitting like you can't just go up to them and be like Hey, like here, you you seem like you need help, or do you need help? Just this is how you do it, man. You just shove it in their hand, you run away. Were you raised in a no. barn? <laughs> like what? I don't know why tricking someone or making someone not like or throwing them off like that is supposed to be like the right thing to do, or how you should. I don't know. Who would ever take advice from Tom Sandoval? Okay, he wants to believe he's a good guy so bad. He thinks that just giving an unhoused mm. person money makes you like you're you're not a good because you're like doing it in a way that's I don't know genuine so he basically is saying like if you do it quick and trick them like wow I just did something so cool like amazing and I just did it so fast they couldn't even say no like as if they don't have agency or it it is so weird but, but that's what he's basically he saying. doesn't give anyone that kind of agency and everyone thinks it's such a good they think he's great because of it like he the way he just like drops money into people's PayPal accounts when they didn't ask for it and everyone's like it's like really nice it's like is it nice or is it buying people it's kind of buying loyalty down the line because it's you know whether it makes him feel good or he just knows like even if he knows like somebody needs it it's just like i would i don't i would not accept money from a friend like that i would send it right back to them and just be like i just i don't i know that maybe you know that i'm hard up right now but i can't accept this from you because it always ends up bad well it's like a bad credit card the interest rates are just too high what exactly Mm -hmm. Am I taking this money? There's no fucking free lunch. No. Attached to someone like that? Lunch. No. Yeah, I, I, like, I just can already feel this. I can already like know how this is going to be leveraged against me. He, he didn't ever give me money, but he sure as hell wanted to remind me how much money he was bringing into my household. And he was not kind about it. Everyone that's like, oh my God, but like he like really helped me out when I needed it. It's like, he's not though. Do you know what's interesting lately? This discourse of like, the last few episodes and people saying that you <laughs> basically have a hard on for him, like that you you're, I'm you're critical. A and all that. Okay, here's the thing. He did something horrible. Like you're a good friend. That's it is what it is. But furthermore, he was really horrible to you for years and years and years. And I don't know why everyone's forgetting. Well, I that. would be a damn fool to ignore, you know, it's like ignoring red flags, ignoring the writing on the wall to stick my head in the sand and pretend that this person has not shown me exactly who they are. And I'm somebody that likes to learn from mistakes and learn from, you know, the past so I can grow. I don't want to, I don't want to like, like stay in the past and keep like on this like wheel of like hell. If somebody is not someone that is up to my standards in terms of friendship or relationship or anything like that, like I don't want to make room for it in my life. Right. And he's someone that's shown to me that like, I cannot do that with you anymore. You haven't been a good friend. You've done horrible things. You've talked to my mother, my family in despicable, horrible Yelling ways. Terry. You've, like you've just like, so, so again, it's not about holding a grudge just because I'm able to like recall and pull up some receipts. It does not make me grudge holding. It's just like, no, these are the reasons why I don't, I have a wonderful life with wonderful people in it. And he's just not one of them. And I've made that decision. 
And your life is better for it. Any other questions? I mean, yeah. I just, it's crazy to me. That's a great example. That whole give money to people and run Mm -hmm. away. He really believes that he did something there. Like he's like, he believes that, that Mm -hmm. that was, you know, what a, a flex or whatever, or like proving himself how selfless he is and that he wants to pander this philosophy to others. And I'm like, babe, you are, I've never met a more disconnected from reality person. And my dad is my dad. So that's <laughs> like, should fucking tell you like anyone that knows him. And I say that with my whole fucking chest. Cause I know he creeps on this and so do his cronies. But anyway, we'll get into daddy issues another time. But my point is I know a fucking delusional narcissist when I see one. Yeah. I'm like, babe, you're fucking, it's just not it. It's and like a dump truck was, going through a fucking China shop. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey, no. <laughs> Every time he does something, I be- immediately become Australian. I'm like, oh, no. Every fucking thing I see online that he does, I'm like, <laughs> and we've all been cringe. We've all had our moments, but his moment never ends. Cringe. Want to know one of my biggest fears? The smelling bat, truthfully. Oh, same. I do smell checks all the time. I know. I kind of just did a little <laughs> whiff when you said that. No, but that's why I love Lumi. Lumi saves the day. Lumi whole body deodorant is powered by mandelic acid to deliver outrageous 72-hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet, even your privates. Want to know a fun fact? It was actually patients' concerns about private part odor that originally inspired the OBGYN who invented Lumi. And we love an OBGYN. Mm. Fast forward six years and her game changing whole body deodorant has now earned over 300,000 five star reviews from people like me and people like me are picky mm. who love smelling great and feeling confident head to toe to the image. <laughs> and we have a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code disrespectfully at lumideodorant.com. Um, My favorite part about Lumi is that it's safe to use anywhere in your body. And that's hard to find. I feel good knowing that it was created by an OBGYN. And because it's pH balance, it's safe to use below the belt. Not a lot of products are. Thank you to this OBGYN who finally came in and thought, "Mm, let's use a (laughs) product that's safe to use down there. My favorite part is that not only does it last all day due to the fact that it's powered by mandelic acid that stops odor before it starts, but it's also made with really clean ingredients. It's free from baking soda and parabens, which is really important to me. Me too. I personally love the clean tangerine scent, but lavender sage is a close second. No, the toasted coconut is like forever my fave. Like Ooh, I want to smell like- You love. I like to smell like a treat. You okay? love the toasted coconut. Mm, I do. You're like an almond joy. <gasps> she is. Smell good. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, Two free products of your choice, kind of like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, Mm. my faves, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code disrespectfully at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code disrespectfully. That's lumideodorant.com and use code disrespectfully for 40% off your starter pack. Calling on my honeys. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Honey Love is the go-to for all things shapewear. I've always hated shapewear because it's so incredibly uncomfortable, but Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology, so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. thing I love the most is they won't ever roll down thanks to the flexible boning that's hidden in the side seams. It's also sexy. Honey Love Shapewear features lingerie-inspired design details that you'll want to show off. It's like, remember in Bridget Jones? She has to choose between the thong and that. You don't have to choose anymore. I also run like boiling hot, which is why I love that Honey Love is made with a breathable fabric. So it keeps you just like nice and cool. We like a breathable moment. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with the exclusive link honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. Please support our show and check them out. Honeylove.com forward slash disrespectfully. Honey Love's Superpower Short is my go-to. It has targeted compression technology that can tell the difference between areas where you want more support and areas that you need less compression. Like, don't smush my booty. Mm -mm. Let that thing breathe. (laughs) Yeah, there's Signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. It's designed to work with your body 
Not against it. Well, most importantly, it's a booty lifter. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Boost bands on the back of the thigh give your bottom an amazing shape. And I'd say my favorite thing about Honey Love is how easy it is to take off. The Superpower Short has 100% cotton gusset. So you can skip the extra undies. Plus, it has convenient opening in the panty area for a super easy bathroom break. Ooh, easy access. They also have incredibly comfortable bras, tanks, and leggings for everyday support. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewears on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. Honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, please, please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Move with confidence with Honey Love. Have you ever been talking to someone about something important and like, you know, they're just like not listening? What? More often than not, like, yeah. Well, that won't happen with ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you've been the doc that you want, you can book them immediately. No waiting awkwardly. And you and I, known for being awkward sometimes, <laughs> on hold of the receptionist. And these docs have verified reviews from actual real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated Patient-reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, are located near you, and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 to 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments. I love how easy it is to book appointments because there's nothing I hate more than sitting on the phone, going back and forth with a doctor's office, trying to find an appointment time. Yeah, same. I will literally avoid ever going to the doctor. <laughs> I also love that these doctors have verified reviews. That's so important from actual patients. So I feel confident knowing I'm receiving good care. Go to ZocDoc.com slash disrespectfully and download ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash disrespectfully. ZocDoc.com slash disrespectfully. Earlier, when you were talking about Jason Sudeikis, this oh. is a quick little quip. Oh, I keep more daddies from our daddy list keep popping up. Johnny Knox. Do you know? I fucking okay. Everyone, I was at dinner the other night, and I look up and I sit down. I'm with Raleigh and her mom and her mom's best friend, and they all I'd gone to the bathroom, so they all were just sitting there, clucking away. And I sat down. I grabbed Raleigh's leg on the table. I was like, "Do you know who's sitting in front of us right now?" She's like, "Who?" Hadn't noticed, oh. and I was like, "Oh my fucking god." Johnny Knoxville himself. He's so fine. In all of his salt and pepper glory mm -hmm. was sitting across what I have to assume is a wife and children. So I was devastated. Mm -hmm. But oh my fucking God. The, no, the way that all of us from the early 2000s, if you're in your teens, like we're so obsessed with him. He looks better. Yeah. No, he's aged so nicely. Like a fine wine. And you think he would age with like a fine Old English or like yeah. a fine Mad Dog 2020 based on what he put his body through. But my God, the man looks good. I saw him one time in a Tahanga Village, like grabbing like a pizza or something. And I was just like, but he grabbed it well. Ooh. Yeah, he was. But he picked that shit up. Yeah, mm. Both hands. Oh, yeah. Both hands. Well, and I'm not like, obviously, we live in L.A. and I don't say this to sound pretentious, but we see like big celebs mm -hmm. all the time. I seldom oh, like bruh. get a big. I seldom get a big, Oprah. I seldom like have big reactions. I never ask for selfies. He was one that I like w wanted to ask for a photo and wanted to smell his chest. But I'm like, again, I want to be respectful of his wife and kids. And I'm like, look away. You look, you look like a Gen Z. I'm sure you could do this well. I'm 0. 0.5, but I want to feel your dad up. Anyway, I'm sorry. I it, respect di disrespectfully, maybe. Yeah, he's fucking hot. Yeah. Anyway, I could not believe we need to get a better name for like the daddy list and just keep it going. Yeah, I know. I was I was actually thinking about that because I was like, add them to the list. What's the list called? Yeah, but, I don't know. But yeah, Jason Sudeikis, Johnny. Nassau, Daddies, I do disrespectfully. The fucking list. Welcome to the fucking. Should we just call it the fucking list? The fucking Double list. entendre. We'll play with it. We'll workshop it. We're not yeah, good on the spot. But like we're good offline. I've met Johnny Knoxville once, too. I used to work on Tony Hawk's podcast and he came on and I lost my fucking shit daddy he tony hawk go ahead 
Mm -hmm. the way that I acted so like we made a quick eye contact and I was like (laughs) like I was basically enjoying my dinner like this like one of those old fucking portraits from the (laughs) 1900s of like how the silhouette photos (laughs) I'm like having dinner with people looking like that because I like too shy to look I'm like using my fucking knife my butter knife and I'm like god anyway (sighs) yeah fuck did he have his glasses on he when, did. He when, did have his glasses on. When daddies with their like salt and pepper hair, and then they put on those like you know black rimmed glasses, Ugh. and th- they have like a tuft too, like a nice tuft of that salt and pepper. I know. I'm like fucking. <laughs> we're, it's hyper- hot. In I'm here. hyperventilating. It is, it's warm. We have so many. We haven't even gotten to the fucking meat and potatoes today. We have so many fucking fun things to talk about. First of all, what? you're at the Glad Awards last night. I sent you at least five hot fire TikToks. That I was waiting eagerly next to my onesie <laughs> cat with her goddamn cone <laughs> for you to watch because they were so fucking funny. Idaho prison TikTok. Oh yeah. That's, Are you on it? I I'm you know, I I dabble. I'm I'm curious. Oh, I'm but you dabble. I'm I'm Idaho prison TikTok fluent. Are you are you about to like dive in? Are you about to like J Pay? Okay. J-Pay. <laughs> You're about to send some shit to the the commissary. Okay. Here's the thing. Wow. I don't know how I got on this. And also we need to talk about the TikTok ban. It's like fucking insane. Here's the thing. I got on it randomly and people in the comments who were haters were like, says more about you. It's your for you page. And I was like, yeah. As Britney Spears once said, mama, I'm in love with a criminal. Like, is that <laughs> is that a crime to love a criminal? But these like hot ass fucking guys that have neck tattoos and yeah. are just like trash bags which is my preferred it's, breed it's such a problem that i like love a tatted oh, dude because like and they and it's you know, just chock full that's where that's <laughs> and they're they're usually there for under 365 days so how bad can it really be i'm thinking it's a non-violent offense and somehow i got on it and i haven't really been seeing it lately and last night i saw a man from idaho prison tiktok singing we found love in a hopeless place which so it was you coded because really? we are and it was me coded because prison <laughs> and i fucking is this our dream myth it was literally like if our worlds came together and i was so fucking jazzed about it because i've yet to see someone sing and then the next guy was even hotter but he was like i'm 23 and then i was like this always fucking happens to me lately mm. anyway my point is if you're not on idaho prison tiktok break with convention don't worry about people judging your for you page it's a fucking delight i've learned what jpay is they basically are all just like looking for a sugar mama but like I'm a grown woman with a bank account. That's lonely. <laughs> so why not? And then there's like, I like this for you. What's the reality show about this? That's like love after lockdown. Oh yeah. Love after lockdown. Have you seen it? Yeah. I haven't seen it, but then people were commenting on that. And I was like, yeah, I don't think it's going to go like, well, I'm just saying for the plot. Dina, formerly on Vanderbump Rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can see your lower third. Oh yeah, and your 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 like little package that they do introing you to the show. Absolutely, <laughs> and like you got to bring the mob wife aesthetic They'll use into this it. This right here, this little portion of the a podcast. Anyway, and can you just watch you, my hot fire TikToks I sent you because they're just for you? Yeah, girl. I I listen. I came home last night. I laid on my couch. I took some weird selfies. <laughs> oh, I love your drug selfies. Listen, I was wearing a cool dress. You hot. The dress was cool. The dress was good. Okay. It's a good dress. I have a really great dress for the reunion tomorrow. I'm really excited about that. How are you feeling about the reunion? I never know what to expect because I never know what kind of like fresh hell people are going to bring mm. or not bring. I don't know. I, do, I just have to go in. I'm like, I'm going to go in with a clear head, clear mind, and just try to speak from like a really honest place. Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose Texas forever. <laughs> That's me. Yeehaw. Well, fucking Cowboy Carter is coming out. So all of a sudden, I guess I'm, you know, fucking into country music. Did you drink last night? No. Also, I'm so congested. So you guys and I like put jeans on today if you're not watching because I've been a fucking trash can. Okay. This entire series. So we we did unpack (laughs) after the cruise. We decided that Rose and Jack would not have lasted. This was a really hard left. It is. I just, so, but I wanted to say it because we did, we talked so much about that and I was really bummed that no one rose to what catered me. I can't say the same. So <laughs> we were, <laughs> but so we they were, would not have lasted. Okay. So me and Katie because... were on a hot girl walk on Sunday, which led to queso dip, which led to margaritas, which led to, I was fucking drunk watching the Oscars. Okay. 
that was a series of events. While we're on our walk and we're all horned up because so daylight the savings. Queso on me. Huh? <laughs> oh, I keep that thing on me. Queso, it's like eating gum. You have that shitting for I seven watched years. It, I watched it hardening in the bowl. And I kept eating <laughs> I looked it. looked at my stomach and I was like. Mm. Oh, I'm drinking margaritas, watching it completely solidify and scooping it out. I was like, I was like, that is, that's doing that in me. Okay, so we're with the solidified cheese. Margaritas are flowing. We were having this walk, though. We had an epiphany. I can't remember how we got to it, but we basically were like, the reason that these movies are so fucking romantic. Because someone dies. Because they died and they knew each other for fucking 72 hours, okay? Before the door on the water. It's whirlwind. It's like not supposed to happen. It's star-crossed. It's never. It was never meant to last. It was never meant to last. They would have gotten to the statue of Lib and he immediately would have been like, you know what? You're actually um, pretty high maintenance for me. I'm a painter. Yeah. I accept dying. She's like, so do you have like a retirement plan? Do you have like a 401k? She's like, <laughs> Just kidding. Are, you into, are you into stocks and bonds? And their bond would have been broken. So the, the way that this story goes down in history, it was three fucking days. Meanwhile, I'm not on a boat and I don't die and I fall in love with someone in three days and everyone's upset and it's like, oh, she's unstable. And I'm like, how stable was that bitch falling in love in the sweaty car? If they wouldn't have died, it wouldn't have been this big fucking love story. He would have ghosted her immediately. They Ellis Island, they signed the book and he would have used a pseudonym so she Mm -hmm. wouldn't know his real name and he'd be fucking out of there. Yeah, he would have been down at the pub every night playing fucking marbles or whatever they Doing play. Doing karaoke. Dice. And not coming home. And she would have been like, Jack, I'm fucking sick of your shit, dude. Ordering mozzarella sticks. Like you didn't have a fucking care in the world. <laughs> mozzarella. Well, that's what I do at our dives. He but- would have ordered slices with his buddies. <clears throat> trying to like just, you know, make a buck while she's like at home being like, Jack, this is bullshit. He'd be like, I need to find myself. He's painting bitches. She's like, who's this? <laughs> Jack, who's this? He pulls out her fucking scroll. Another French girl. It's like the 1912 DM. <laughs> yeah. He's like, who's this? She's this like, is from memory. You're crazy. The gaslighting. The ga- I found another drawing of yours, Jack. <laughs> Look at the date. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this was last week. Yeah, they wouldn't have lasted because it's only romantic because they died. Same with fucking Romeo and Juliet. We, we fucking love the Claire Danes. Ugh. Leo again. It's a fucking conspiracy. Any fucking Leo DiCaprio movie, it wouldn't have lasted. What about Gay Gatsby? Nah, then we're gonna go there. Does anyone die? Yeah. Who? I don't oh, know. I watched that oh, one. Oh, yeah, they get in a house. car accident. Someone else. Okay. Spoiler alert. <clears throat> Just kidding. If you haven't seen it, it's like fucking okay. 2024. Relax. Okay, but um, um, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. They were fucking teenagers. They were chilling. Feeling each other up. Little, I know, but the, also, listen, she got to Mac with fucking Paul Rudd and Leo. Mm. Hot Leo. Whatever. That's not the point. Yeah, it's romantic because they end up dying. And you're like, oh my God, like, I would totally kill myself if I couldn't be with my lover. Like, mm, probably not. Like, I think about all those Maybe people. Maybe take a Kalana pin, like, go on a walk. Yeah, think about. Touch some grass. Like, think about all those dudes that like, oh my God, like, this hurts so bad. And then like the next week you're like, that guy? <laughs> Yikes. Look, I'm aware. <laughs> Big yikes. I'm in so many people's Look at who he's following and then you'll be like, that's embarrassing. I'm in so many people's memory banks as they are yikes and I've accepted that. But the people that I thought that I like died for, devastating, there's not a single fucking one that I'm like, wow, I wish that had worked out now that some yeah, time has I would, passed. I would blow my brains out for them. <laughs> not one. Not fucking one. Not one. And I don't, I kind of wish there was just to Why? experience. I don't know, just to know what that would be to like. Feel something. <laughs> I don't know. I I just think you're making excellent points. No, so actually, like, I want to know if anyone has ever felt that for me. Not for me. Maybe for you. I don't have that. I know there's no one that's like, it's like the one you, that got away. They're you, like, thank fucking god. Like, I'm if like, you I saw me medicated. Like, I'm sorry. Like, my dad you, didn't love me. If you thought I was dead, would you drink poison? Have you? Me? No, no, not you. I want to. I want to know if anyone has ever felt that for me. I know you're saying, but ask me. Would you drink that? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. Well, I'm a loyal ass bitch. I'm too. You know that to fault and dysfunctional. So maybe I'd, maybe I'd, I'd have a little lick of it. I wouldn't drink the whole thing. I'd be. Like, you smell it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, kind of like a popper. Just. 
those are sold over the counter. I don't care about talking. But I saw I saw a TikTok once of don't someone do that, poppers. that that dropped their poppers <laughs> and they just got it. He's like, smell it, <laughs> smell it on the ground. <laughs> Listen, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be. Everyone would, has would you drink the poison but... if I drink poison. You selfish Yo, bitch. Why not, bitch? I'm like, we're in, we're in it together. Sure. For the plot. For the plot. <laughs> we're so fucking toxic. Damn. For the plot. I'm here for a good time. <laughs> the, the thing is, at my funeral, the only time I'd pop up from my, would be to look, make eye contact with you and go. <laughs> and then pop back down. That's what we decided was that this shit was romantic because one, Leonardo DiCaprio, two, they die. Yeah, absolutely. It's not talked about enough. Oh, oh, we have some other fun things to talk about next I know. week, you guys. Next, yeah, we've been doing this for we a while. Because other fun things we're going to We've been talking for a while. That are new. Can we fucking do basement? Mine was just basically like LA traffic and potholes because I'm really <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm really sick of it. No, I've been driving around like literally hitting potholes. All of a sudden, it's like low pressure tire like on my thing. I got like an alert that won't go away. Every time I turn on a car, it's like beep. And I'm like... <laughs> And then I sit there, I sat, like, it's just, there's traffic nonstop. Okay, wait, here's the thing. Basement, it, it, LA. It rained in LA one time. We were discussing this. Yeah. There's a thousand potholes. I just got a new car. Every on-ramp is tire. like the moon. Yes, I was blue, right, mine right near my house, almost blew out a tire. So LA is but, the surface of the moon. There's craters everywhere. But do you know what LA has, which I'm, which potholes essentially are, but just in a little tiny version? Sinkholes. <laughs> Imagine you're driving, da, 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 da. It's like quicksand. It, yeah. I don't well, who are we talking to? We're like, I thought I would be dealing a lot more with Wes quicksand. And Allie. Yeah. I thought we would be. Me too. Shout out to Wes and Allie. I'm scared of sinkholes so bad. I really don't want to do that. Or mudslides. Irrational or fear, quicksand, quicksand, sinkholes. And I don't know. There was like this one post I saw. I was going to repost it of like, I don't know. It's like Kenosha County somewhere. I think it's called Kenosha. What? They're like, they're like they were posting <laughs> a you very- just call me? Kenosha, I don't know. It was like someone like reposted it. It was like on like, uh, like a, on a meme page, basically. And it was a very earnest thing where they're like, they're, it was like an outreach to the community. They're like, hey, if you have a pothole, the whole thing, come fill my hole, take a picture. And, <laughs> and it went on and on and on about like, come and fill your hole, fill Katie's your hole. Like, and I was like, her masseuse. She's like, ew. <laughs> We got a new segment. We have a new segment. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's called Hometown Heroes. Home. Spelled H-E-A-U-X-M-E. Ho. Ho. Hometown Ho. Heroes. <laughs> so we were kind of joking, not really, about you guys sending stuff in. And also, we want your crazy dating stories, your bad dating stories, your bad relationship stories, your dating success stories, your... Slutty, slutty stories. stories. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what else to say it. I don't anything that's interesting, like anything at all for this community we've created that you like, think you know what we're talking about. Yeah, you like, get the vibe. You the get the good, vibe. the bad, the unhinged mm-hmm. is what we're looking for. Any of it, same exact email, disrespectfullypod at gmail dot com. In addition to advice and wwdd, send us your stories. We got two this week, and they are. So fucking funny and unhinged. So let's get into it. Okay. Hometown heroes. Oh. M says, six years ago after a funeral, I found myself in an auto parts store with my parents. The guy at the front desk caught my eye. Tall, tanned, with a full sleeve tattoo. Sounds like Idaho prison TikTok. (laughs) Hot. We exchanged glances, but he didn't ask for my number. Later at my apartment, I opened Tinder and there he was. We matched and I thought fate was at play. We chatted for a bit and he asked me out to dinner and a movie. But the night before the date, he sent me a pretty cringe-worthy poem. I feel this in my soul based on what happened to me recently. <laughs> poem. Pearl sm- Excuse me. This is the poem. Pearl smile and mocha eyes stare at you and not realize. <laughs> Lips so red, fogging thoughts in my head. You're a poem I've never read. Yes, he misspelled red. He spelled it R-E-D. You have words I've never said. Skin with glow, like stars putting on a show. One and one will go with the flow. Let's go, hun. We can go real slow. Is this like <laughs> fucking... If Christian Grey fucked Dr. Seuss, it would be this. You don't drive, but in work ethic, you thrive. You hustle and strive. Dedication on your mind. Tight like a hem and sparkle and gem. Can't wait to go out with this girl named M. 
Despite the warning signs, I went ahead with the date. He showed up with a too tight red polo, attracting ridicule from a neighborhood football mascot. Ten minutes in, he asked me what my red flag is. And at the time, I had a crazy stalker ex, so I told him about that. I asked him what his was, and he told me that he's in the witness protection <laughs> because he used to be a drug dealer. I've dated so many drug dealers Dude. and worked for El Chapo, to which I was like, okay, sure, he's bullshitting me. He's bullshitting me and thinks this is cool or something because who is stupid enough to announce that they're in the witness protection? The rest of the meal is blank. We head to the movie and he got us tickets to see Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2. He didn't even ask if I had seen the first one. I did it. I was so uncomfortable at this point and he's just pushing through. Out of nowhere in the theater, he puts his head on my lap and I push it off. We go a while without talking and then he whispers in my ear that he had a surprise for me later and he couldn't keep it anymore. The surprise was his dick piercing. Is he royalty because Prince Albert? Uh. I let him know that I would not be meeting his penis. Once the movie was done, he took out his ID to show me his picture while hiding his last name and started giggling about how he couldn't show me. And I blatantly told him that I thought that was really weird. He drove me home and I had a joint on me. I asked him if I could smoke because I would not be sober with this man another second. I light it up and he takes it from my hand. He starts smoking. He parks outside my apartment and tells me that that he really misses the money from drug dealing and then starts crying out of nowhere about how he misses his mom in Colombia. I was confused because he told me he was from Calgary. I told him I would not be comforting him and that it was time to go back. Back home, I shared the bizarre experience with my mom who surprisingly found his mugshot online. He had been arrested for trafficking meth in Utah. Luckily, a week later, I met my now husband and everything fell into place. It's a crazy story, but reminder not to give up on dating, no matter how weird it gets. Lady Bird. What I'm confused about, that's not the, that's not the message I took from this story. The message I took from the story is trust your fucking instinct and do not go on a date when someone sends you a fuzzy gloves poem. It's a Sex in the City reference. Yeah. Um, is that thank not you for fucking sharing insane? That. Thank you for sharing that. That's fucking that was, unhinged. No, I wanna, that's like a bedtime story. El Chapo? What's, the, what's your least favorite part of this? Mine's the poem, I think. His two-type polo. <laughs> His dick piercing that he thought was a the, present. No, the, I got a surprise for you. I got my penis pierce like sir he's like did you like snl in 2013 remember dick in a box yeah oh god yeah but it's just like dude like you think you your penis is a gift get in the basement <laughs> base this person get is in the basement in this there is so fucking funny and clunky i laughed so hard when i was reading this so fucking funny i love it 200 yours yeah okay victoria date story hi girlies before i <laughs> before i start i just want to say that this is the only podcast I ever kept up with. So thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so a few years ago, I went on a date with this guy I met on Hinge. We first met up at a restaurant and I had never met this guy. And I swear 30 minutes in, he goes in to kiss me. Ah, sir. I don't even know if I like you yet. Yeah. What the Ew. Ew. And when he does so, he spills our drinks on the floor. Messy. It's like the poppers on the ground. I'd be like, <laughs> lap it up, bitch. Dog you lap to get it. Through. Um, this gentleman got so drunk at dinner and we still had plans to go skating afterwards. I wanted to leave, but I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. So we went skating and he's falling everywhere. And I mean, falling hard. And people are looking at him like he's crazy. He was. <laughs> when he was returning the skates, I thought it was perfect time <laughs> to plan my escape, but I couldn't do it. Then we get sushi and he orders sake and gets even more drunk and proceeds to tell me how doing acid changed his life and I should try it sometime. Finally, we go for a walk and this man is now in space. So belligerent. He tells me he has to use the bathroom. Because he's so drunk, he just goes inside a building and pees in a plant. While he's in there, I Google mapped my place to where we were. Thankfully, it was only a 10 minute walk. And I knew there were no more benefits of the doubt I could give. No. No. Shit. Once I left, <laughs> he was calling and texting me. And so I blocked him. Hopefully he got home safe. But that was probably one of the worst dates ever. Oh, and he lied about his age on Hinge. He was 27, but oh, he said he was 27, but he was 36. I was 23 at the time. <gasps> Sorry if this was all over the place, but that's because it was IRL. Thanks for listening. Holy, that is a. Victoria, Tori, can we call you that? 
<laughs> so many fucking things about this. Go. Go. What I, are your thoughts? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm proud of you for just lasting. You blasted through a dinner where he was messy. You lasted through skating. And then sushi. I mean. So I was confused about the two meals. One was enough. <laughs> so why did we go to a second? Also, this is what you're saying earlier. Like I, every woman has had this. You just go along mm -hmm. with it when you know you shouldn't. I know because we want to be nice. Listen, every woman out there, stop being fucking nice. Stop being nice. Who cares? Who fucking cares? I, I'm so tired of, of everyone being nice. Stop being nice. I don't care. Fucking like, tombstone. I, like, I don't care. Like if I'm a bitch forever, then I'm a bitch forever till I die. Literally. Oh. You, it's how you get stuck in these horrible situations. Put it on my tombstone. All I have to say, bitch. Here lies bitch. Leave out the name. I don't care. Didn't have to deal with Saki Bomb Loser. Yeah, like literally every man hates her because she wasn't nice to him on a date. Bitch. Ooh. Poor you. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. First of all, I love the skating because I like to roller skate. So like good for it. But to be so fucking drunk, it's giving toe holding guy for me. The guy who got like unnecessarily drunk. <laughs> also, when I read this, I was like 10 minute walk home alone at night. I That's what I was worried about. Again, it's being women. You have to worry about safety and whatever. So well, I was, then I was like, She's probably with, safer on that walk than with that fucking literally, fool. Which is so upsetting. But I'm like, um, good for you, by the way, for leaving and then blocking him and seeing your escape. So you did eventually get out of it. But holy shit, this person is a fucking weirdo. And I'm so glad you left him. Mm. And are men okay? Mm. Like, get your practical magic on. The aunts, that's what we're yeah. Um, to. Um, my retirement plan is just to, like, be, aunts. you know... A witch of lesbian. The, of the witchcraft kind. <laughs> Lesbianist. Witches. Anyway, you guys, it'll get less clunky, but these are so fucking funny. Please keep sending them in. Okay. And now let's get into some WWDD. WWDD. Dub Dub D D. Keep, and again, sending them in short and sweet. All these hometown heroes. Dub Dub D D. Please. Disrespectfully pod at Gmail. Belle. Hey, ladies. First of all, love the pod and appreciate all that you two do. I listened to both of your previous standalone podcasts and I was so excited when you announced this one. Okay. On to my question. I struggle with the size of my areola. I do have big boobs, B cup, and my areola nipple take up, I'd say, more than half. I feel like every woman has small, cute areolas except for me. My husband tells me he loves my boobs, but I always consider aerial reduction to boost my own confidence in my boobs and being topless. Do you have any thoughts on this? I say embrace it. I have so many thoughts on this. Really? Oh, yeah. I, first of all, I think there's, I mean, there's, there's so many different varieties and different, I don't know. I mean, I don't like, what are we comparing to? Oh, no, it's the same talk track. I bet your boobs are adorable. Yeah. And if your I husband loves just, it, like a little button here's the thing that is a, a symptom of the patriarchy right you need to have these big giant tits with your tiny little areolas like i am all about plastic surgery too though so we were just discussing earlier i would probably get a boob job if it i didn't worry about the side effects i have a nose job it was the best money i've ever spent so if it is something that is really really triggering for you and you cannot get over it yeah there are things you can do but also with areola specifically i know that it's a risk of sensitivity reduction Mm. so like there are you know it's like cost benefit right of of doing something to actually change it i think you should embrace it too i think that honestly bigger areolas the bigger the better i love them i yeah. think boobs come in many shapes and forms i'm just saying back to sydney sweeney we don't <clears throat> know the size of our areolas but i bet they're not tiny and if they are like what's it like being god's favorite but <laughs> you know like it is but i don't I, Why first conform? Of all, I think first they're beautiful. Of all, I don't, and small boobs I didn't have big areolas. That like small areolas were desire. I didn't know that there was like preference or that was a thing or whatever. I just thought like some people have small, some people. But I just I didn't realize that there was like that was a thing. Well, maybe it's just because she feels insecure about it. She's making that up more to be. Well, a thing then in her head, I think but if you're insecure and you're gonna feel better, do what you gotta do. That's why I say it's up to you. It's your body. You can do whatever you want with it, but. I always say try to just embrace the things it's makes just for well it's just like female anatomy it's like also with like vulvas like people they they want their vagina to look a very specific way but vaginas come in all shapes and sizes as do breasts men yeah. are never sitting around with their tiny dicks and being like 
I wish it didn't look like this. Like, it's just not a thing. This is just women, the way that we internalize everything and are made to <laughs> believe that we have more or less value based on certain beauty standards. Mm -hmm. I bet your tits are adorable. That's all I have to say about that. But if it is something you really need to change, then do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, try to embrace it. And also your husband loves them. But yeah. he's not lying. Anonymous says, hello, I'm writing to you from the Midwest. I'm 27 and my husband is 28. My husband and I have been together for 10 years. After two and a half years of trying to conceive, IUI and IVF treatments, a recent miscarriage at nine weeks, are first positive. I'm losing hope and wonder how to find satisfaction in my 20s and 30s without the potential of children. I'm sick of people saying we are too young and it'll happen naturally. Just adopt or to relax because I feel like it's just toxic positivity and providers have told us it will not happen naturally. I'm writing in to seek advice on how to find joy and content with how you live a happy child-free life and how to navigate with friends and children. I have so much to say about this. First of all, I'm very sorry you're going through that because that's traumatizing as fuck. Having a miscarriage. I mean, going through IVF in general, anyone who goes through that process, I know I have many good friends who've done it. It's super emotionally taxing, financially taxing. Otherwise, the biggest thing, you are only 27. The biggest thing that I wish that I could have told my 20 something year old self is to decenter kids as the only bar of life achievement or what is happening. Yeah. By the no, way, I, I fucking love children and it's so hard to do that, especially if you want them and you're married and your partner wants them. However, even that sentence when you're saying how to live a happy child free life, I wasted almost 10 years of my life being unhappy because I didn't have a partner and didn't feel like I had a pathway to children. And now I have completely accepted it's very possible I'm not going to have kids. And I'm so, so, so OK with that. Like, I think that people want children when it is a perfect scenario, when they have a partner that's great, when their child doesn't have any physical issues, any like there, there's so many things of when you picture what uh, your family is going to look like. But actually, I'd say like probably 80 percent of the time you're going to be thrown a curveball. So there's so much that actually goes into it that is beyond just like your need or want to have kids. I wish I had not wasted so much of my life thinking like if I don't have this one thing, I won't be happy. And like yeah. makes me sad that we have to be trained to learn how to be happy child free because, oh, my God. But if they really great, want but they're they're doing like IVF and everything. So it's to like so I, I totally think there's no. Wow. But for me, as yeah. someone who formerly like knew for sure I wanted kids and now I kind of sway back and forth. You have to look that fear in the eye and mm -hmm. accept it's a possibility. Unfortunately, this is a possibility. And it, by the way, it is very dismissive when a friend says you just adopt. Mm -hmm. I've had people say to me, just get a sperm donor, just adopt just this. Yeah, but you probably just want that family unit like that's what you're yeah. looking for. Right. So it's super dismissive. but. You do have to, in my opinion, no matter what your fear is in life, look it in the eye and sit with it and be like, OK, so this could happen. But then what? Are you just going to be miserable for the rest of your life? But I mean, again, like when people and they don't want to hear like just adopt, but it's just like have like. There does come a time where it's like, do you, is it more important to you to have kids naturally or like from the two of you or like is it about creating a family? Is you just you just really against adoption or I don't know. I mean, life just doesn't always turn out the way that we envision it. No, sometimes, I know. and it's also <laughs> yeah. Tell me that. First of all, it's okay to grieve it, but then second of all, I think it's really important to sit with it and mm -hmm. try and be like, okay, well, alternatively, what would life look like, and how can we fill our cup? And it looks different for everyone. It took me so much longer than it should have mm -hmm. to realize that, and now my cup fucking runneth over. Usually with tequila. Okay. I thank y'all for sending in your questions and also your <laughs> dating stories. So keep those coming. Yeah, hometown heroes. Yeah, hometown heroes and your questions. So yeah, until next time, I love you. I love all of you. And yeah. I love you and yous. I love yous and yous and yous. And again, don't feel like you have to be nice to people, but be nice. Be nice to yourself. How about that? Be nice to you. Fuck everyone else. Bye. <laughs>